Hi, Chad here with Purple Collar Life, and part of Purple Collar Life has been changing my own oil. I've done it for decades in almost every vehicle I've owned during that time. Today, I'm gonna to change the oil in this 2010 Ford Ranger with the 2.3 liter, 16 valve, four cylinder engine. If you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button and the bell beside it, and then go ahead while you're thinking of it and click that like button, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Now, if you're doing your first oil change ever on any vehicle, this should be a good tutorial for you. Some of these parts are only specific to the Ranger, but most of the instructions apply to any gasoline vehicle um, that's relatively similar to the Ranger and a four-cylinder engine. So one of the things I like to do right up front is get out everything I'm going to need, or at least everything I think I need for the oil change. I need an oil drain pan. I'll put links to all these things down below, Amazon affiliate links. So if there's anything you need that you're going to order, I'd appreciate if you could use that link when you purchase it. It doesn't cost you anything extra, just gives me credit for sending you over to Amazon. Going to need a funnel to put the oil into the truck. I like to have one of these shop towels handy just to keep my hands wiped off. Um, and wipe anything else that's in the way, as well as a rag that I can use for the more messy stuff. You know, if I start leaking oil when I'm draining it and it doesn't hit the pan exactly and it ends up on the cement, I can wipe that off with this. I like to have a creeper to roll underneath. You saw I pulled the truck up on a couple boards just to give myself a little bit more space underneath there. This is a two-wheel drive truck, so it's not that high off of the ground, not that much ground clearance. And cars are even lower. I like to have a light so that I can see what I'm doing under the hood and under the vehicle. So a nice little light like this is good to use during an oil change. And then nitrile gloves. Um, I'm just going to be wearing one on my left hand. I'll try to do all the messy stuff with my left hand because my right hand will be turning the camera on and off and moving it. So I like to not wear the glove on my right hand just because of filming. Now some parts specific to the Ranger. For any vehicle, you're going to need the proper size wrench to take the oil drain plug out. And for the Ranger, that's a one half inch specific to the Ranger with the 2.3 liter engine. I need a filter. This is an FL910S and I'll put a link to this down below. Filters is one of those things where I always recommend using the OEM brand. So, you know, this is a Ford vehicle. This is a Motorcraft Ford filter designed specifically for the Ford engines. Uh, that's just rule of thumb for me. I prefer to use the name brand filters in the vehicles that I own. So I, you know, since everything we own is Ford or GM, I use Ford filters, Motorcraft filters in all my Ford vehicles and GM filters or AC Delco parts in our Chevy Volt. I do not recommend using Fram oil filters I've read too many bad things about how they perform. For oil, you want to make sure you have enough oil for the vehicle you're changing oil in. Uh, this is a four quart of 5W20. So I've got the Motorcraft Synthetic Blend 5W20 and a five quart jug. So I'll use four quarts out of this jug. I also have the air filter. I like to go ahead and check the air filter and change if necessary at the same time. For the 2.3 liter engine and the 2010 Ford Ranger, this is a Fram Ultra Air Filter number 8243. I don't have any issues with Fram air filters, just the oil filters. And one reminder about your oil pan, this oil drain pan will be appropriate for the Ranger because it does hold four quarts of oil. If I tried to use this oil pan, which holds seven quarts to drain the F-350 truck sitting beside me, it would overflow. The F-350 holds 15 quarts. So that's another example of you want to make sure you have the proper equipment for what to, for the task you're completing, and this would not be the proper oil drain pan if I were doing the diesel oil change. So right here is the engine, and there is the oil fill cap. You can see that it is labeled as a reminder that this engine uses 5W20. And you can see how helpful it is to have my light. So I'm going to go ahead and use my gloved hand and just loosen that up. I'll kind of set it to the side there so that that can breathe as I drain the oil from the engine. 
I've got my light set up there. And as I roll under the ranger here, there, so this is my right hand or my passenger side front tire. This is the oil reservoir. Right behind that is my transmission. So on the right hand side of the reservoir is the drain. I know at the start of the video I had said that was a one half inch socket. I had to get out from under here and get the right size. It is 13 millimeters. And you can see the pan is not directly below because when the oil comes out, it's gonna kind of come out and shoot to the side. So I wanna make sure I catch it a little bit to the side. So we're just gonna turn this. And I missed the bucket. It shot over further than I thought. And that's why you always have a rag handy. I also got it all over my ungloved hand. And as it starts to drool back further, slide the pan. And that oil actually, you can see it on my hand and coming down through there. It's not very black. It's just needing change due to the date, not the mileage. Only has about a thousand to two thousand miles on this oil but it's been in there for a year so it is a good time to go ahead and change it so i'm gonna let that drip out and then i'll put this back in i do like to look at the bottom of it oftentimes these are magnetic and you want to look at the bottom of the plug to see if there's any little metal pieces there are not and to tighten that up just gonna put the wrench back on it and snug it you don't need to go crazy tightening the drain plug so on the opposite front end side so this is the transmission again to the driver's side of the transmission is the old filter so i'm going to move the drain pan over here spin that filter off let it drain into the pan and then we'll get a new filter ready Oh, it's tight. I did grab another tool, oil filter wrench. Now, normally I don't need this. When I do my own oil changes, I don't over tighten those oil filters. Now, I'm not sure if this is just due to the passing of time that it's so tight, or if the person who did the oil change over tightened it, but I need the wrench to get it off. Using the filter wrench, I had no trouble getting the filter out, but I did get oil all over my ungloved hand again. I think my plan for next time will be glove up my right hand and leave my left hand ungloved to move the camera around and hit the on off button. Our next step is to prepare the oil filter. So there's a couple things I like to do. This is July, so I'll put 07 of 21 on the end and the side, so I remember when I changed this filter last. I do keep track of it in the Carfax app also. And then I take the brand new oil, get just a bit of it on my finger, then you wanna rub that oil on this gasket. Gives it a good seal, makes it go on a little easier. And then I just put the excess from my finger right on the threads so that it threads on nice and easily. There you can see my new oil filters in place. You can see the date on it. I did not over tighten it. I get it to where it's snug and then I turn it a quarter of a turn. And that's all the more it needs. Okay, now we're actually all done underneath the truck. So I put my creeper away, I put my socket wrench away, I put my oil filter wrench away and I pulled my oil drain pan out from under the truck. Now we're working up here on the top of the engine. I brought my air filter up, we'll check that. But first we'll start filling the oil. So I brought my funnel. We'll go ahead and pull this oil fill cap. I like to look up in the cap just to make sure there's no weird white coloring or anything up in there. And then I put my funnel like that. And remember, this is a five, this is a five quart jug, but this 
Ford Ranger needs four quarts of oil. So we will pour slowly and put four quarts into the funnel. One quart bottles are easier to pour, but the five quart jug is more economical. Always buy in bulk when you can. Every once in a while, set the jug where it's level to see how much oil is left in it. Right now we are between two and three quarts left. We wanna get down to where there's one quart left. So on a level surface, we're showing a little bit more than one quart left. We'll let that drain down through. We'll check the dipstick. I like to give the oil a minute or two to drain down through the engine. And that gives me a good amount of time right now to check the air filter. Here's our filter. Yeah, it's ready for a change. We'll go ahead and pitch that one. Again, it's a 8243 Fram. See, this one's nice and clean. We'll go ahead and check and fill the washer fluid while we're here. I know some of you guys in the southern states may not be familiar with washer fluid. You might just put water in your windshield washer reservoir. But here in Northwest Pennsylvania, we have to use actual fluid that will not freeze in the winter time. So we're gonna go ahead, it's been sitting long enough now, we'll pull the dipstick out. Take a look at our oil level. We'll need to wipe it from being down in the engine before. Put it back down in. Now it shows that we are at the max, but we haven't yet started the engine for the oil to flow through the filter. So when we do that, it'll actually use a little bit of oil just to fill the filter cartridge. Okay, so starting that up and letting it run a few seconds, Let's the oil pump through the filter. So we'll let it drain back down into the oil pan and then we'll check the dip dipstick one more time. I do use the CarFox app to track maintenance on my vehicles, but I also like to on the vehicles that do not have the oil reminders built into the system. I like to put the mileage that it's due next, which on this truck will be 72,000 miles. Now these little stickers are free at Advanced Auto Parts. Whenever I buy anything, I try to remember to grab some of these because they're nice window stickers as reminders when the oil changes do. Again, on these vehicles where it doesn't tell you with the computer system. And we are good. We're actually right in the top of the hash below the max dot. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on camera. We are right here. Here's the max dot, there's the minimum dot. You always wanna dispose of your used oil properly. I write used on a previously emptied oil jug, dump the used oil into that jug, put an ad on Facebook, and usually someone who uses a waste oil furnace in their garage stops by within a few hours and picks up all my used oil. If you don't wanna do that, you can take it to Walmart, I believe. There's a place that recycles it or disposes of it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get all my tools put away, get cleaned up before I get back in the truck and then I'll take it for a test drive. But I'm too oily and dirty like this, so I really need to scrub up before I get in the nice clean vehicle. Thanks for watching. If you like videos like this, give us a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. Comment down below, share with your friends, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you again next time.